Hello, hello, happy Thursday. Well, it's Thursday for me. Whenever you're watching this might not be Thursday. Um, hope everyone's doing amazing. I wonder, let me just turn off the Bluetooth because I was listening to music just in case. Okay, I just wanna make sure that it's not trying to listen through the speaker. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're here in the studio. You may have seen I was um, throwing some teapots maybe a couple weeks ago, and I put a couple together, which I will show you, but I am now at the stage where I'm gonna put this last one together, so I thought I would share it with you. Now, um, must tell you that I'm not a teapot maker. I've just, these, I've made three in the last couple of weeks. It's been years since I've made them, so, um, not perfect, but um, I'm okay with that. I think they're gonna look great. As long as they function and pour and don't drip too badly, I think we're gonna be fine. So, I threw this teapot body a few weeks ago. Um, in this case, uh, there's no gallery in it. This one I did differently than the first. I just put a rim so that I could put a lid in top on top and it would fit inside. So I just trimmed the bottom, so it's got a nice bottom and it has a nice shape. So the next stage is um, adding the parts. So the reason teapots are so expensive is not expensive. I'm not gonna say expensive because they're not expensive. They're well worth any amount you would pay, but some people feel that they are a little pricey because they're like, what is the big deal about a teapot? I can get one at Walmart for 20 bucks. Well, a handmade teapot is some, a totally different beast and they are made with love and care and there's so many things that need to work together in order for them to function well. So, um, I'm gonna, so I've got the body. I am, I'm just gonna see if there's any comments. I'm just worried that I can't be heard. That's my only thing. Um, that's fine. Uh, there's so many things that could go right and so many things that could not work. And they all, everything has to work well together. So I've caught my pot. I've also got, I, I've trimmed a couple of different lids here to start. Now, this uh, one was originally for one of the other pots and I didn't use it, but I'm going to see if I can, um, I'm gonna make handles on all of them and then we can decide which one we're gonna use. The problem is, I think, with the ones I made, I made the, um, the I don't know what you call this part, flange, too narrow for the hole because you don't want your lid to be kind of like moving around like this. So this one's definitely too uh, small. This one is much better and I kind of like this. I did a little knobby thing on the top but I'm still gonna add another loop around there which I'm pretty excited about. And then I have this other one which is a little bit flatter and it also is a little big but we're gonna go with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna cut a piece of plastic because you don't wanna keep fussing around and lifting up your lid because you may warp it or smoosh it or whatever. But I like to see how it looks on the pot as I'm making the lid. So I get a piece of plastic and I'll lift it and put that in there so that I don't constantly ruin the lid. So there's my, there's that. Now I have to put on a spout and a handle. I'm gonna start with this, I'm gonna start because I'm here. I'm gonna start with the knob. So I like to do hand-built knobs. Um, I think I, I showed you how I threw a knob onto a pot and I think it's not on these, but um, it is on a couple of other ones um, that are for another piece that I'm remaking. So basically what I do, it's the same with um, how I make handles generally is um, on those fancy dishes is I make a carrot shape, which is narrow at each end. I'll like throw it down on the, <laughs> on the table and then I'll get my little, oops, my little roller. And I kind of want to make a little bit of a leafy shape. And then I'm gonna get a bit of my wood rib pressed down into it so it ends up looking like this. 
and then I and then I'll shape it. So I want this to be kind of like that sort of look on top of the pot. Um, so I can either attach it together and then attach it as a loop like that, or on some of the other ones, I did it where it was a bit offset and I kind of like that. So I'm just gonna take a look at it. It's good to look at it face on. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. So I'm gonna go with that. So. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'd like to do what I call a water and weight method. So I'm going to scratch where the center is of this with my scratchy scratchy. <laughs> and I put, dip it in water and then I scratch it so it's basically creating its own little slip and teeth that can attach together with this pot. And I'm going to do the same with the handle. The handle is slightly wetter than the pot, so once I get this on, I'm probably going to want to put that handle, this handle, I'm going to want this to dry slower so they catch up. Alright, so that's that. So if you look at my finger, it's quite wet, so it's not quite ready yet. So in the meantime, I'll get the other, the other one ready. Um, I think I'm going to make this one a little smaller. So the good thing, um, a thing if you want to have some efficiency, you don't want to make one teapot at a time. Sometimes it's good to make a number of them or anything you're doing in production. Make a few of them, you'll learn from it, but also you can work on things in sort of a line. So you're not waiting for something to finish. You can just keep going. So in this case, you know, I've got my next handle ready to go and I can just set it up and leave it over there. And I'm going to make sure I look down at the center and I'm going to press the one down and then I'm going to curl it around and press the other down. And there's the lid. So it has a little, because it's the way I've attached it, it has like a little bit of a swoop. So you can see that. Cool, huh? I like that. And then that's gonna go with the handle I do because I'm gonna match the style of the handle, which I'm also going to hand build with the teapot. So I'm just, I'm not adding water, I'm just kind of smoothing that out. I'm gonna make sure that's well attached what I like to do sometimes is get a piece of a tool and press into it. It'll leave a mark, but it'll also help it further attach. Yeah. There we go. So that's handle one. And now I'm going to do this one. Oh. Well, I can see that I did not put that hand... <laughs> That mustn't, the lid must not have been totally on center when I trimmed it, but honestly, nobody's gonna see that. We are going to just go ahead and put the handle on, and what I'll do is I'll make sure it's more off to the side where the space is so that it's not obvious. I just like this little extra piece at the top. It just gives some visual interest um, and gives you a place to put your, your knob. Scratch this bottom part. How's everyone's Thursday? Or whatever day you're looking at this. I will post this on my YouTube channel as well. So you can, if you missed any of it, you can catch it. Yeah, see once you add it on, I don't think you're gonna notice as much. So I'm pressing down. Yeah, see, I kind of like the, 
I like the way it looks. This one looks better because it's got like a little platform for the, the knob. It just gives it a little extra something something, as they say. Clean that up a bit. And then I'm just gonna let it set up. I'm not gonna fuss too much with it right now. I'm just gonna move on to the next thing. So I'm gonna leave this one on. Wow, that really looks crooked. Why, why is it so crooked? <laughs> it's okay. All right, so now I need to add a handle and a spout. So I threw some spouts um, last week and I've kept them in my bin. I've got several here that I can work from. Um, basically what I've done is I throw a hollow cone on the, on the wheel and usually what I do to make this easier is I throw it off of a large lump of clay so you're not like trying to form it from a little tiny piece and then you can make several and then decide which ones go on your teapot. So the thing you need to remember about a spout is that you need to have it angled on the pot so that you can fill the teapot. So if I put it here, this means I could pretty much fill, fill the tea up to here without it falling off. So some people, when they first start, they maybe put it too low and then don't realize that it's going to limit uh, where they're going to, um, uh, how much tea they can put in their teapot. Trust me, I know I've done this before. I actually have an old teapot at home that I've recently found that I am trying out. It's actually not that bad, to be honest. And you know, it's a small teapot, so I don't mind. So I have this one. And you want to kind of take a look at it straight on and then also at the side. Now that looks pretty large, but I do have a lot of clay here I want to cut away. So I have that one. I have this one, which is really long. And I could, in theory, cut the top off, but I don't, I'm just going to disregard that. And then I have this really little one, which I'm kind of grooving on because what I like about it is that hmm. I think this might be the one. <laughs> I mean, I can cut quite a bit off this one to make it fit, but I feel like this one has an, a nice shape to it that might work better. So let's start with that one. This is why you make extras and why it's good to do multiple things at once. Okay, so I'm gonna decide where I'm going to put it and that may depend on, um, maybe you hit it somewhere, there might be an imperfection, something like that. There seems to be something weird on, on it here. So I think I'm gonna put it here. So then the idea is you wanna hold it up to the pot and figure out where it is you're going to put it. So I think that's a good spot. The only thing is, is that it's not gonna fit that way. I have to cut a bunch of it away. So a trick to do that is to hold it, now you can't see this, I'm holding it on this side, but then you hold it in the spot that you think that it'll fit, and then you draw, you follow the line, the curve of the pot, and that tells you where you need to cut it. So in this case, I would do it this way and then draw the line. So now cutting it. You can cut it with a knife or if your thing is, is if your spout is firm enough, you can use something like this tool, which has got a wire on it and you can lay it down and you can drag it across. So I've taken off that extra thick piece of clay. This is where I'm not, <laughs> I'd say that I'm not the best at this sort of thing. So I have to make sure, this has got, uh, when I threw it, it's got a longer side as you can see. So I want that to be um, at the bottom. The other thing about spouts, which is interesting when you're making teapots, is that they can uh, twist <laughs> when you're, um, when you, um, when they fire. 
So sometimes it helps to just smooth the inside where the throwing lines were. And then people have a, a rule about um, putting it on a certain curve if you're cutting it and that sort of thing. I'm gonna really not try to fixate on that too much today because this is not my, not my thing. So I'm gonna look at it straight on. I feel like that's pretty good. Um, I think that's the spot. So you look at it sideways, you decide how, how much T you're gonna put in. I think that's pretty good height. And what I do is I will mark it with a line on the spout and on the pot. So that both on the top and at the bottom. So that you know where you're going to attach it. So trick to figure out where to do it now. So so I'm going to scratch this again and make it fairly wet because I'm going to lightly place it on the pot and then, <laughs> where did my, okay, so now my line is gone. Okay, I think that's like that, yes, there's my line. So I'm going to look at it straight on. I'm just going to gently put it on the pot so now that's left a line where the scratching can go and also tells me where the holes can go because you have to put holes in it because you know tea needs to flow through there the other thing you could do because this is quite round you could also what sometimes people do is just press in and flatten that a little bit it'll allow you to then your um spout does not seem like it's sticking out so much. Yeah. yeah, I already like that a little bit already. Okay. So now some people will cut the entire hole out. Some people will put um, smaller holes in it. I'm just gonna do holes because that's what I feel like doing <laughs> that's really the only reason and so then you get a hole cutter here's one here and I'm just gonna poke some holes in it to allow the T to go through I'm also, as I'm putting this in, I'm putting it on a bit of an, and there's two. So I'm just gonna keep going and do as many as I can in that space. I'm going on a bit of an angle, assuming that the, you know, that you want the liquid to go straight through the teapot. Honestly, I've completely forgotten how to do teapots. I'm like going by memory. So I'm gonna be very happy <laughs> these work out. I think they will. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll have a new teapot. <laughs> Uh, if anyone's watching and they're potters out there, I'd love to know if you make teapots often, if it's something you avoid. <laughs> I've been avoiding it for years. I, only because like it's not something I mastered. I didn't really love the process. And so, so many people make such beautiful teapots. I didn't feel like I needed to make them. <laughs> but I do like the idea and I am doing a show in May, I haven't done a show in a long time. Um, we're having our West Hamilton artist tour. It's gonna be a gallery tour this year. So in Hamilton, um, rather than a walk around studio tour. So I'm pretty excited and I wanted to try some new things for that special show. Um, so teapots I thought were a great thing. People love a handmade teapot, especially if it functions. Okay, so now I've got my holes in it. So it's nice to make it look pretty too because you know, People will be washing it, and although this is gonna be covered on the outside, you will see it on the inside. And so, why not make it nice? So I'm gonna scratch around where the attachment is, hopefully not blocking any, 
any of the holes. I think I did a pretty good job, left enough room for that scratching. I mean, they are fun to make. I love like when all the components come together. It's just they're a lot of work and you know, that's why you need to price them accordingly. And so hopefully people will love these and, and uh, take them home to enjoy every day because that's why I make things. I love people enjoying handmade things. Like I love handmade things and having handmade cups you know, for coffee and using handmade things. Even my crappy teapot from like one of my first teapots I made. I still love it because it's handmade and it's like I got my little teapot, I got my things going. Okay, so I'm looking for those lines. There's the line. So now I've got, I've got that all scratched up and I've got to attach that on the pot. So, <laughs> so I know that this one side is a little lower so I'm going to there we go <laughs> looking pretty good so far Not bad, not bad. I like the way that the, the, the spout is on the shoulder. I'm really liking how that looks. Um, so I'm just kind of pressing it. I'm gonna take this lid off for now. I just wanted it on to give a bit of perspective. So now I wanna push from the inside and the outside. So I'm gonna compress those teeth together and get that on the pot. So this is Thursday. I'm switching my studio day to Thursday because I am, Tuesdays have become really busy. Um, I am working on, um, I'm still doing relationship coaching and so I'm getting busier doing that, but also working on a new program with my partner around relationships. And so um, I'm pretty excited about that and I wanna get it out there so that people, you know, so I can, you know, talk to people about their relationships. I love talking to people and you know it's so interesting how we all have things about previous relationships or relationships in general and how we our sort of our attachment styles how we were raised what kind of uh, relationships we had with our parents and our family and how that impacts um, us as adults um, so I'm doing a lot of reading on this lately and finding it like super interesting and you know kind of coming to this place where oh hey Chantal coming to this place where understanding how I am in a relationship and why I am that way and why my partner or other partners might be a certain way as well and when you understand that those sorts of things it, it really empowers you I think to you know, to be aware and understand how you're, you might be reacting or feeling or feeling jealous if you're feeling jealousy or, you know, you feel like your partner is like really clingy and why they might do that. It might be because they had insecure attachments as a child. And um, it's so, it's so interesting. <laughs> Anyways, like I realized that I had pretty secure attachments um, as a child. Like my parents were there, they were responsive. So when you have a, like a secure attachment, then you know typically um, in your relationships you feel secure in those relationships and don't constantly need reassurance or are afraid to attach because it's there. You know they're there to support you. I mean I'm really simplifying this, but that's the general flavor. But it's just so interesting. People who have less secure, they may be more like had less secure attachments as children you know, or young adults, may be more um, clingy or um, they have like what's called hyperactivity. So you're in a relationship, 
you feel like you constantly need attention because you're worried, you feel insecure constantly. So it's, anyways, very simplifying it, but loving it. So, so we're working on our program um, to support people and having the most open, honest relationships in their life, and it's pretty exciting. And so I will definitely keep you guys informed of that. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing the rest of my time. Okay, so I'm just kind of smoothing and attaching. You can decide here if you want that join to be seen or if you don't. Um, and I could fill that in with clay and make it disappear straight into the body, but I think I'm gonna leave it showing because I like the line of it. And also, if I look at the lid, I've created a bit of a line there as well. So it's showing all the various points. So that's that. The other thing sometimes people do is they thin out this edge a bit because that's where you're going to be pouring. So I'm just going to get this little knife and just do a little bit of that. The thing about handmade teapot, well any teapot really, is you need to have a bit of a, uh, sh almost a sharp ending so that um, the tea, when it's coming out, cuts off. I'm just taking a little bit out of there, but I'm just thinning it out, smoothing it out. Okay. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let that set up a bit, and then I'm gonna move on. that's sharp enough. Okay. Yay. Okay. Next part is the handle. So this seems really simple now because I've got all the parts made, but it's not as simple when the parts aren't made. Uh, but I am loving this. I do love, like I do love it. I'm, I am a sucker for design, so. Kind of loving that. Um, I'm gonna put the lid on again because again I want to make sure that whatever I'm adding kind of all goes together. So pretty loving that right now. I can see some of my scratching lines so I'm being particular here. Sometimes it's just best to wait until it's set up a bit but I'll just smooth that a little bit on this one. So it's not as obvious. Okay. So again, <laughs> this is where you need to be, make sure, I'm gonna take the lid off for a second, that where you start to attach your handle is in the middle. So I'm gonna use this. I'm putting it basically straight across the pot and then drawing a line underneath it so that I know where the center is. Hmm. I'm just looking at the spout. It looks like it's a little not as straight as I wanted. Uh, you know what? It's fine. Scott Barnum used to say that it's like he used to say this with bowls, but like if your pot's a little bit off or your cup, something circular is off, he used to say that. Um, if somebody is put in your pot on a turntable and noticing that it's off, he said that's probably not the person that you want to buy your pot. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second. I guess I need to move my other lids somewhere. <laughs> put them over here. Because I wanna show you the other finished thing. I'm still drinking all my, dr my drinks this morning. Okay, handles. I love making handles. Usually when I make cups, I do I uh, pull the handles off the pot. But um, for these, I'm going to um, make a hand, do a handle. Hand. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, I'm gonna get some clay. Ooh, this is Thing about this clay that I have, it's quite firm until you start playing with it. That's 
a pretty big chunk. Okay. So, if you're wondering what I'm working on, I'm working on a piece of, a scrap piece of wallboard, um, drywall, um, which is great uh, because the clay, it absorbs some of the water, um, but it also, the clay doesn't stick to it. So this is way too much clay, I already know. So I'm just gonna take some out. So I'm basically gonna make a coil. But in this case, I'm not going to make a double-ended carrot. I'm just gonna make a carrot. So thick on one end, thinner on the other end. Probably not gonna need all this, <laughs> but. So there's the carrot. And this is also how I start when I pull handles off the pot, I'll do the same thing, make a carrot and then pull it off the pot. But in this case, I'm just gonna do a hand-built handle. Okay, so similar to the other one, I wanna make it match the handle. So I'm going to throw it down. So this kind of stretches it and thins it out a bit. So see, it's got that, it's wider and then narrower. I'm gonna get my little pony roller roll it out a little bit more so you can see I've rolled it and now it has a bit of a, a seam on it and I can leave it like this or I can do similar to what I did with the handle and press in press in this which I will do just lightly because I have to do it in two spots because my thing is not long enough if you want you can use your your sponge to smooth it out so there your handle's made, you can form it and let it set up for a minute. What I'm going to do, because it's quite soft, the other thing you do might want to do is because this is um, so thin on the outside, you might want to wrap it in some plastic because it's gonna dry first, and if things start to dry unevenly, you may have a bit of an issue. So I'm just gonna give it a little wrap with some plastic so that doesn't happen. Okay, so while that's happening, while that's setting up a little bit, I will show you. This is like the Terra cooking show, except it's pottery. A couple of the ones that I've already worked on. So here's one, pretty happy with that, how that one turned out. It's a little smaller, it's got a nice little spout. There's that handle, and then there's the lid. So in this case, these have a gallery, and I think, and then the lid fits in there, plus there's a flange. So I like this fit and look better. But that's fine, I wanted to try something different, so I think that one's quite successful. I've added the handle, and that one's just setting up. So there's one. Remember how I did, I'm trying to look at how I did the handle, because I'll want to attach it in a similar way. It looks like it goes a bit up, and then down and attaches. And here's the second one. Ah, that's got a really high handle a thinner spout, a bit longer. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking good. This lid fits, yeah, even better. I wonder if any of these ones fit. No. I was just curious. Yeah, so note to self, go to the trouble of making the lids that fit in the gallery 
because you'll get a nicer fit. This one looks like it's almost too tight, but sometimes the, sh the lids shrink a little more than the pots for some reason. The other thing is that's important to know is, I still, I'll still have to decorate these, but when you fire them, you have to fire the lids on, not with the plastic, obviously, because that way when everything fires, it shrinks together. Okay, pretty excited. Okay, so now I'm gonna attach this handle. It's a bit soft, so I'm a bit worried about that, but that's okay. We will, we will, we will go with it. Oh shoot, I need to take this off so I can, so I can see the spout. Because I want to make sure that everything all goes together. So, I probably, I put an X here where the middle is. I probably won't start the handle that low. Maybe I will. So then I'm going to take my handle and I want to get an idea, holding it to the side. Ooh where I might put it and how it might go. How, what you think about in terms of a handle is you kind of want a 90 degree hang, angle between the top of the lid and the spout. So you want this, this to be a 90 degree angle, like between like that, <laughs> if, so that when you're holding it, you have the right leverage I think that's correct. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, hi, Lynn. Hi. Can you hear me? I, I'm worried that I've been doing this whole video without you being, people being able to hear me for some reason because I had my uh, stuff on. Um, okay. So I don't like the way I've attached this. So I'm going to the end of this. So I'm going to clean up the end. So I've cut. You can't see that. I'll show you. I've cut this on an angle because of where it's going to attach. So it's going to attach like that and then carry through to here, I think. So I think I'm going to cut it here. Oh, I cut that on the wrong angle. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes it helps to hold the, the thing down this way and then you know that you're cutting at the right angle so you can shape it correctly. Yeah. Okay. Go. So. That looks about, oh, it's still not the right angle. Cheapers. Gee willikers. That's okay though. I'm going to I'm going to squeeze it in. So that's fine. Okay. So now, remember So, I want to do it like that. <laughs> Here's the tricky part. Okay. Got my X, but I know that I want the lid to start higher than that, so I'm just going to remember where the center is. I'm gonna take this off so it doesn't throw me off. And keep looking, I'm keeping looking straight on at the, <laughs> at the, uh, where the spout is. Now some people, um, depending on the type of, uh, you can do like a one ha a handle teapot and you actually want the handle at the side. Um, and then if you're lefty or righty, it depends on which side, which is really funny. But anyway, uh, I haven't made one of those, my mentor, Les Manning, who uh, has passed, uh, who's an amazing man and taught so many people pottery and inspired people like me to pursue it. Like I would not be doing pottery um, if it wasn't for him really because I, I mean I did it full time for a long time and I loved it. I made a decision based on some per personal circumstances to stop doing it full time but you know he instilled in me a love of ceramics and helped so many people. So. Anyway, he used to make this one-handled like teapot, which was amazing. Okay, and I'm gonna, oh, so I don't know where this is gonna attach. There. So you could do what I did with the handle and like mark these both and then it'll mark on the pot exactly where you want it. It's probably what I should have done, but hey man, we're this far. <laughs> So 
it's also good to get closer to eye level. I'm in my studio chair. Whoa, that goes down. <laughs> And here in Toronto, if anyone's wondering where I am that's watching this, because I know I have friends from all over the world. Hello, friends. It's a rainy day here in Toronto. Okay, so I've got my two spots there. And now, still not convinced this is the center. <laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit farther over here. Okay. So now I'm standing up. So I'm gonna get my handle and I wanna push it in where I wanna attach it. It'd be nice if this was a little more set up, but it's okay. And then, is that correct? No. <laughs> it's so interesting. I'm looking at it straight on, yet it's still like, I feel like it's still not right. And then make sure where you're attaching it on the bottom is also straight on. So I'm pushing in from the inside to attach it. Ooh, I don't like that angle. I want it to be more like that. So I'm just going to problem is this, this clay is, I probably could have let it set up a bit longer, but it's okay. It will set up. I could keep attaching it and then hang it upside down and then it will, and then it, will uh, it will naturally fall that way. But I'm just going to make sure that it's on. Everything is timing in ceramics, I find. It's like, so interesting. Yeah. So it's a little, I don't quite like how it's sitting here, but that's okay. I'm, I can add clay. I'm gonna continue to work on this and uh, finish it up. So there you go. There's your basic teapot. I'll do a little bit more fussing, but uh, there you go. Happy Studio Thursday.